a block. Plus, you notice with that embassy going up, keeping bases in Iraq, we've got bases in Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Oman, Turkey, Afghanistan, Pakistan, even clear on the other side of the Arabian Peninsula across the Red Sea in a little African country called Djibouti. Why? Why are we putting so much of our military there, even sucking them out of Germany and North Korea in order to staff all these places? Why? Especially considering the $19 billion worth of crew is only 10 to 20 percent of America's gluttonous oil consumption. Why is it so important unless it is to implement long term the curse of the Wolfman? Hey France, hey Germany, hey China. We don't absolutely have to have that Gulf oil, but we know how much you do. Therefore, if you aspire to a greater regional or global role than we have in mind for you, forget it. We can turn off your faucet any time we want, and we've got your whole economy by the nuts from now on. That is the curse of the wolf man. But one thing that's common with people in these think tanks who know what's best for everyone else in the world and places they've never visited in their lives, it never occurred to Wolfman or any of the Neanderthals, what about the people who actually live there? How do we think we're going to get away with this? I put like a no plan into Iraq. You don't win a war until you've won the peace. Kicking Saddam Hussein's ass and keeping his personal pistol on your deck as a, desk as a Texas-style souvenir, that does not win wars. It's basically like we went in there and then you just fly on a plane or something, all of a sudden you hear over the, over the intercom, Hey, this is your pilot speaking. And we've got to get some really tight high mountains and some pretty terrible turbulence coming up just ahead. So I decided to fly the plane upside down and turn off all the instruments just to see what happens. <laughs> that was basically our plan in Iraq. Rumsfeld was told he'd need over half a million troops to keep the peace, send in 170,000 and fire the general who said we needed more. And, uh, the first person we put in charge was a general named Jay Garner, who at least he lived in the country, he lived in the Kurdish region for years, and kind of knew what was going on there, maybe a little too well. He promised the Iraqis back their country in 90 days. And the whole elections within that time period, oh, out comes the cane onto the stage, yanked him away, and instead replaced him with Paul Bremer, who had never been to Iraq in his life and came straight from working as the privatization expert at Kissinger and Associates. And he stomped off the plane or the helicopter or whatever in his business suit and combat boots into the Iraqi noonday sun and announced, Iraq is open for business. Not Iraqi business, no. We want to talk about looters. It was to bring the looters from out of the country in. And the looting inside the country was the major reason that got so bad. Well, here he walks in and fired the entire, entire 400,000 member Iraqi army and replaced them with nobody. Fired. All the bureaucrats who ran the health ministry, the education ministry, the telecommunications, you name it, fired them all and replaced them with nobody. Then he fired all the cops and replaced them with nobody. And the uh, result was all hell really broke loose. And so, you know, there were the, the Baghdad got looted, the towns got looted, and the, the Iraqi National Museum, considered the jewel of ancient Middle Eastern culture, was destroyed. Oldest calendar ever found, gone among the many thousands of priceless artifacts people walked off with as troops stood idly by. Rumsfeld's comment, oh, well, freedom is untidy. 
you know, you wonder what that guy masturbates to or something. <laughs> but maybe this wasn't just incompetence, but partly by design, the dream that Bremer and the Wolfman and the others had was to completely, you know, just wreck the whole economy, fire everybody from all the state-owned businesses. Bremer ordered them all to be sold off to foreigners and all profits could be taken out of the country, which is illegal under international law, their dream being an entirely privatized society. Whether the people liked it or not, private companies would run the jails, the hospitals, everything. Well, kind of like the United States comes to think of it and all. And needless to say, that didn't work very well. In part because it was so short-sighted you fire 400,000 military troops from the generals on down to the foot soldiers. Insurgency! They've already got the weapons, they already have a chain of command and organization. And some of these people had greeted us as liberators. A lot of the Iraqi military refused to fight for Saddam Hussein this time around. And the reward was to lose their jobs, lose their pensions, mad as hell, and that's where we are today. Also, 